and sees him not, neither knows him. Um, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. He dwells with you and shall be in you. So there's another experience that Jesus said that the disciples can have with the Holy Ghost. He said, right now he's with you. And I remember my teenage years sitting in Sunday school and church and feeling what we call the Holy Ghost goosebumps on my back. But there was a whole different experience when the Holy Ghost, I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and he came in me and began dwelling inside of me. So we look from here that we see there's a difference between just having the Holy Ghost with you, but he shall be in you. If we turn to Acts chapter 19, and I'll read Acts 19. Acts 19, 1 through 4. Now this passage is not in your notes, so if you want to document it somewhere, feel free. But it's going to be Acts 19, verses 1 through 4. And the Bible states, and it, shall, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Now notice here, he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost? And he said, Since you believed. So these were already believers. They were saved. And... And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. John's baptism being that of salvation. Referring back to John the Baptist. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, or salvation, pointing them to the way of salvation. Because remember, he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And that, we're going to go a little bit farther, down to verse 6, actually. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So when we look at, at these two passages, John 14 and verse 17, and also Acts 19, 1 through 6, we see that there is a distinction between salvation and the Holy Ghost that is with us there versus the baptism of the Holy Ghost where he dwells within us. So there are two different things occurring here. Say, say, that, quick, you say that again. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is different from salvation. You can be saved and the Holy Ghost is with you, but God has another gift for us. We refer to it as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So, so you're saying the Holy Ghost is with you, and then you're saying the baptism is the Holy Ghost is within you. Exactly. Well, why wouldn't the Holy Ghost be in you at first? Because he is only with you at first. You are not completely sanctified. And when it comes to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with evidence and other tongues, it is a free gift. There is something additional to salvation. Mm. It's something I'll, entirely I'll different. Between the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, it, 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 it's in your body, goes in your body, and it's in your body. But, but I see what you're saying here in the book here. It says what you're So at salvation, the Holy Ghost is with you. At the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he is in you. And when we look at the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is not just stammering lips, but <coughs> a full language. The tongue is a full language. And it is a gift of God. Man may try to mimic the holy baptism of the Holy Ghost. The devil hath may has his own anointing, like I mean not go even go there. So you're saying what you're gonna say there is only uh, the devil can actually make someone speak in tongues. He has his own and only gift. It is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost from God. So it's, it's fake. It's a fake. Uh, he, has okay. his, he has a fake version of the gifts. Wow. And God is the one that is the giver of this gift. So why do I need the baptism of the Holy Ghost? First of all, it's a free gift. If I was to stand up here and offer you 20 bucks and all you had to do was come up and take it and it was yours, who's going to stand on their pew and just sit back? It's a free gift. 
The baptism of the Holy Ghost is a free gift for everyone that has already accepted Jesus Christ as their personal state, as their personal Savior. It brings you closer to the Lord. And it brings you closer. He gives you more of him. He gives you more of his power at that point as well. Uh, it is, and it's not that it's your power, but it's the Holy Ghost working through you. And once you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost to be used in the gifts of the Spirit. We know that God has other gifts for you as well. If someone would please read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11. So he divides every man severally as he will. As he's speaking of the gifts of the Spirit. You cannot be used in the gifts of the Spirit until you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And these gifts are imperative and are meant to be used for ministry. And when I say ministry, it's not just the preacher, it's not just the Sunday school teacher, but it's every one of us. Every one of us are, is given a ministry in the kingdom of God. What is that ministry? Well, that's between you and God. But we all do know that we are all commanded as Christians to go out and reach the lost, to tell others about Christ. The gifts of the Spirit can help us in those situations. Maybe God wants to move in Walmart and you have the gift of healing through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And God tells you to lay your hands and pray on somebody. You know, the more you obedience to the Lord and just what you're saying there is uh, going out and bringing lost people to Christ. Uh, to me, it keeps your mind on Christ and it brings you closer to Christ. It does, and we always have to be working because we know that we're running out of time. Christ is coming back at any moment. And because of that, we should be seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost that we may be able to work more effectively for God's kingdom. We know that it gives you power from on high. We take that from Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send you the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Why else might you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Does anybody else know what else might the, might the Holy Ghost do? If we think about it, it's a free gift. It gives you power from on high. Or the armor of God, too. It helps us with the armor of God. But what do we know specifically about the Holy Ghost? What might he do with the believer? What does John chapter 16 and verse 13 state? John 16, 13. John 16, 13. So the Holy Ghost is the one who guides you <coughs> into all truth. You know, sometimes man can think things about the Bible or think things about the Word of God, and they're completely not true. I remember our Bible school teacher, Sister Goodwin, telling us that years ago, her mom was reading her Bible, and her unsaved dad came by one day as she was reading, quick read the verse she was reading, and said, well, this is what it means. Well, he was way off. Years later, he got saved. And you know what? 
then he realized that that verse didn't mean that, but this is what it meant. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is the one that guides man and man into all truth. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, uh, opened your eyes to the truth. He opened Why? our eyes to the truth. Our eyes, our eyes, if we're not careful, can be blinded by man's truth. They really can be. And what we do is we take man's truth and apply it to the Word of God. And it doesn't work. But the Holy Ghost is the one who is the revealer of all truth. What are you saying, man's truth? Are you just saying somebody's speaking about God and don't read the Bible? That's nothing else I'm getting or, or Yeah, or, well, great example is when we look at man's science versus the Word of God, man's science does not line up to the Word of God in every area. It really does not. Man will say that there's millions and millions of years. We evolved from monkeys, yada, yada, yada. That's not what the Word of God says. That's different. So man's truth is different from God's truth at times. And the Holy Ghost is the one who reveals all truth and makes those distinctions. There's also another thing that happens when we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit of truth helpeth our infirmities, for we know what what. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You know, there are times that we may know that there's a situation that we need to pray about. We don't always know how to pray about it. Or when we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when we're praying through the Holy Ghost, He can take over and pray for that situation. So when we don't know what to pray for, He is the one that prays for us through us. Well, in other words, I pray for wisdom, favor, anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray for kindness, but I had that in my prayer not my prayer. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to uh, some things that they're just we're not sure what to pray for or how to pray about it, when we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we can just let the Holy Ghost pray through us. Because yeah, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Sometimes going back to what we just read in John, what was it, John 16, 13, he's the revealer of all truth. Well, we may not know how to pray for that situation, but he can pray through us. Well, even John 17, say that he prayed for us. Absolutely, absolutely. So he guides us in prayer. He guides us into all knowledge. So, when it comes to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, why is tongues the evidence? Out of anything that God could have chose, why did he choose for the tongue or a strange language to come out of our mouth versus anything else? Did nobody understand it? Well, you speak that nobody can understand it. That some people think, well, you should have interpreter there to see what you, you, you're saying when somebody's speaking in tongues. But if he has it that uh, nobody should understand it, then no English, then it's no uh, language on the earth. Well, we have to back up for a second because kind of what you're quoting is dealing with the gift of tongues. And the gift of tongues is completely different than the evidence of tongues from the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The tongues that we're talking about with the baptism is for the believer. So when the believer is praying in tongues, let me back up. The believer that has the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that is praying in tongues, he's praying, he's edifying himself. The gift of tongues is for the entire church. But why did God choose the tongue? Well, I think it's pretty clear to answer that question from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. James 3, 1 through 6. Because when we look at James chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, the Bible talks about the tongue. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle, bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, 
that they may obey us. And we turn about the whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small help, whithersoever the governor listeneth. Listen. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great in matter a little fire kindle. And the tongue is a fire, and a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. So when we look at James, he's not talking about the arm being the greatest member of the body, or the foot. But he talks about the tongue being the thing that controls the whole body. If it offends your brother, well, you just defile your whole body through that little member that we call the tongue. The tongue is powerful, and it controls our whole body. And guess what? Has our tongue ever gotten us in trouble with God? It's not necessarily always actions, but it's what we say. And we find that it has also done that in Genesis chapter 11, <coughs> verses 7 through 9. If someone would please read that. Genesis 11, 7 through 9. Genesis 11, 
that verse again. We're going to look at Mark chapter 16 and verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. And what was the other one? They shall speak with new tongues. Speak with new tongues. How can man speak with new tongues? Only through the power of the Holy Ghost. If we look also at Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, the Bible states this. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, not as they gave utterance, but as the Spirit gave them utterance. When we look at Pentecost, it is a response to what happened back there at Babel. Back there at Babel, man gathered to set himself against God, and he was all in one language. And because of that, he was able to gather up a great mass, a great army, and they all refused to go, and they spoke evils against the God of heaven, and they refused to go anywhere. And because of that, God changed the language. But Pentecost, we find men doing what God commanded them to do. Go and tarry in Jerusalem. Man didn't gather himself together, but God gathered man unto himself in Jerusalem. And then they were obedient versus Babel where they were disobedient. They were obedient and tarried. And then God came down and said, I'm going to give you a new language. I'm going to give you the gift, not the gift of tongues, but I'm going to give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost with new tongues. And that's exactly what we have here in Acts chapter 2, 4. Men speaking languages that they did not know, but yet it united men and brought them to Christ. So when we look at Pentecost, it is God's response to battle. And it was there that God gave man new tongues. And we see that Peter didn't control these tongues. Mary, the mother of Jesus, didn't control her tongue. But it was the Holy Ghost speaking through them. And when we look at tongues, it is an entirely different language than that individual knows. We, there are people that know different languages, and if somebody who knows French gets up and starts singing for the Holy Ghost, and they're praying and praying, and all of a sudden they go into French, that's not a new tongue. That's not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But a new tongue is something that they've never had before. Some language that they do not know. I'm trying to figure out where I want to go with this. Now, what is this? 
And when she was, she was the first one out of that group to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And for one week, she spoke Chinese. She wrote Chinese. She spoke Chinese. Did she know Chinese? Absolutely not. They brought linguists in. And it was remarkable because everything she was doing was a perfect dialect, Brother Eli. But it was a language that was unknown to her. Something that she never, ever studied before. But she could write. But she could read it and she could write it. And how is that possible? Because of the Holy Ghost. I would be a mark one. Try to write Chinese, right? <laughs> that would be a challenge on the end of by itself. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's through the Holy Ghost alone. We can, the tongue is an unruly member, and you and I cannot tame it. Only God. And that was one of the promises that Brother Dennis read there. And, uh, of course, I'm going to forget. Mark. 16, 17, they shall speak in new tongue. Why? Because it's not of us. It's all because of him. And it's through the power of the Holy Ghost. Does everybody, anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything yeah, they want to add at this point? You've got to engage your brain before you speak in it. Don't you? Or, or my, you oh. not got to deal with your brain? I mean, you just can't speak something your brain don't... You have to have... Before you speak in tongues, you have to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When you are saved, salvation is a completely different experience than the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They're two different things. We find that from reading uh, Acts chapter 19, 1 through 4, and John 14, 17, I think it was. The Holy Ghost is with you, and he shall be in you. It is entirely different. Now it is a free gift. It does not mean we have to go beg and God, God, give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because if you talk to anybody who has the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it didn't come when we were begging for it. We were seeking it. But we were praising God when it came upon us and we received that gift. And a person who's just uh, what we call stammering lip when they're praying for the Holy Ghost, that is not the evidence. They have not received the baptism yet. It is when words start coming out. So you automatically don't receive it when you get the baptism. You're it saying is. when you worship, the more you're being, and the more you worship the Lord, the but closer you get to the Lord. You need to seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The person who receives salvation can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the same night that they receive salvation. But there are those that have not received it the same night that they got saved. I didn't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost until I was 19, and I was saved since I was about seven. Well, I it's entirely different. With the Holy Spirit. You think you, tongues you is know good. that through understanding the Bible better? Or? When you speak in other tongues, that is the evidence. If there has been some that I heard that they were in Jesus for the Holy Ghost, and they got the Holy Ghost. Oh, I heard that too, brother. But it, once again, it still doesn't change the fact that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a free gift, but it is still separate from salvation. And, and this woman, she didn't know why she was holding her mouth like this. You know, oh. She didn't know, you know what the Holy Ghost was. Absolutely. It just came out. I believe that, brother. Yeah. But it is a free gift, and if we do not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we need to be seeking it. We need to be striving that God give me this gift. Not that we beg for it. But it's a free gift. Who doesn't want a free gift? How many people do you hear out there that say, if it's free, it's for me. But there's a lot of Christians out there that have salvation, but they don't have the gift of baptism of the Holy Ghost. And with that being said, we're going to conclude right here and prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise and glory for everything you've done for us and will continue to do. Lord, we thank you that your God who reigns on high, that there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels by the four corners of the property, above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be in one mindset, one accord. That we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move and make himself visible if he so chooses, Lord. I pray, Lord, that if there's any here that does not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that we seek you for it, that we strive for it, like the disciples did, that we carry it until we receive it, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you're going to pass our brings forth your word today, anoint his mind and his lips bring forth your message. 
I pray, Lord, that you're anointed song leader and the musician, Lord, as they praise you upon the string instruments, upon the vocal cords, Lord, as they lead us in songs you have us to sing. I pray, Lord, that you anoint our minds and our hearts to receive the message that you have for us today, Lord, that we may remember it throughout the week, but even greater than that, Lord, we will apply it to our lives, Lord. Apply it to our hearts, that we may be even drawn closer to you and changed with the very image of Jesus Christ. I pray, even, Lord, right now, that our hearts and minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, Lord, that the Holy Ghost may move it however he desires. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thought we couldn't teach you that. Hey, dude, what are you doing here already? Oh, I thought we were filling the old 